We are reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. We are reading from the introduction to chapter 5 of Adi Leela. We had started reading it, the glories of Lord Nityananda. We are getting, we are, this is, chapter is entitled Glories of Lord Nityananda Balara. And we are uh, getting some idea, a detailed um, idea about the material and spiritual worlds. So, Ocean Essence. We did the Pradhan. Yeah. And then Garbhodakshai Vishnu. Is she, she, I'm not sure if we did that. He expands as Sri Rudakshai Vishnu. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll read. Mahavishnu again enters, in, uh, enters every universe as the reservoir of all living entities. Garbhodakshai Vishnu. So Mahavishnu. Yeah. He is creating all the universes. He is creating all the universes from the pores of his body in this Karana ocean. All the universes are floating there. And from his pores, um, these universes are coming out. And then he enters as Garbhodakshai Vishnu in every universe. And all the living entities, all the living entities are going to come now from the, in the, from the navel of the lotus flower of Garbhodakshai Vishnu. So all the living entities are there in the body of Gar Garbhodakshai Vishnu when he's entering into the universe. From Garbhodakshai Vishnu expands Shirodakshai Vishnu, the super soul of every living entity. So I, now Garbhodakshai Vishnu has entered the universe. Now he's entering into the heart of every living entity, into every atom of the universe. Garbhadakshai Vishnu also has his own Vaikuntha planet in every universe where he lives as the super soul or supreme controller of the universe. So what is that planet inside the universe is Shweta Dweep. Shweta Dweep is the planet within our material universe. It is a spiritual planet. Shweta Dweep is a spiritual planet within this material universe where the Lord lives in his feature as Paramatma the Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. So Garba Dakshai Vishnu reclines in the midst of the watery portion of the universe and generates the first living creature of the universe, Brahma. The imaginary universal form is a partial manifestation of Garba Dakshai Vishnu. So Garba Dakshai Vishnu, he's lying down in the Garba ocean, the ocean which is there filling half the universe. And from his, lotus, uh, his navel, lotus flower comes and Lord Brahma sits, is there, is created. And it's also mentioned that the universal form, universal form is like, you know, or oh, the, the, where are the hellish planets? They are like the, the feet of the Lord and then the middle planetary systems and the upper planetary systems, then all the trees and the rivers, how they are the different parts of the body of the Lord, the clouds are his hair. You know, the ocean is his navel. Then the trees and plants are the hair on his body. And then the hills and mountains are his bones. So how the different, uh, that, is the, that is his universal form. That is his universal form. That is Garbhodakshay Vishnu. On the Vaikuntha planet in every universe is an ocean of milk. And within that ocean is an island called Shweta Dweep, where Lord Vishnu lives. Therefore, this chapter describes two Shweta Dweeps, one in the abode of Krishna and the other in the ocean of milk in every universe. The Shweta Dweep in the abode of Krishna is identical with Vrindavan Dham, which is the place where Krishna appears himself to display his loving pastimes. In the Shweta Dweep within every universe is a Shesh form of Godhead who serves Vishnu by assuming the form of his umbrella, slippers, couch, pillows, garments, residence, sacred thread, 
throne and so on. So here we are being told of two Shweta Dweep. One Shweta Dweep is in the Krishna Lok, in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world where Lord Krishna lives. In Golok Vrindavan. In the Vaikuntha world. Okay, so and that Shweta Dweep. That Shweta Dweep is the Vrindavan Dham here. Because whenever Krishna appears, his Dham comes with him. When he comes, when Krishna comes, his dham comes. That, and so the, the Vrindavan that we are seeing here now in India, that is a dham. Now we can say, but oh, I don't see anything spiritual there. It's everything material. And if it is spiritual, how can I see it with my material eyes? It's true, we can't. Because we do not have the spiritual eyes, we are not able to see the real spiritual Vrindavan. We can see only earth and dirt because we do not have the eyes to see it. But when we purify our eyes, we will be able to see. We will be able to see the... Uh, so we need the spiritual eyes to be able to see spiritual things, not material eyes. So the dham is, it is spiritual. Only we do not have the eyes to see it. We do not have those five senses by which we can see the, the dham, because right now we have material senses. Our senses are covered with matter. When we purify them, we will, and the process of purification is to chant Hare Krishna. Chant Hare Krishna and hearing. So, and then there is another Shweta Dweep in every universe. Shweta Dweep is an island where it, and this island, Dweep, right? Dweep, island. Shweta, because it's surrounded by an ocean of milk, ocean of milk, and is there within each and every universe also. So there are two Shweta Dweep inside every universe. One is the Vrindavan Dham, that is exactly as Lord Krishna's abode, although we are not able to understand how it is spiritual because we are not able to see the spiritual part of it, only the material. We think it is material because we are seeing with our material eyes. And uh, the other one is where the Paramatma feature stays, where, where Shiro Dakshai Vishnu stays in the universe, the planet Shweta Dvi, pole star, is the pole star. In English, we call it the pole star. And in that Shweta Dvi, Lord Shesh, Lord Shesha is the, the, the snake on which Lord Vishnu lies down, his bed, Shesha. And Shesh, the Balaram ji wants to serve Krishna in all the ways possible. He, he wants to serve Krishna more and more. So he becomes his umbrella, his slippers, his couch, his pillow, his garments, his residence, his sacred thread, throne, and so on. And so all the paraphernalia of the Lord is spiritual, not material. For us, pillow. Pillow means something unconscious. It's, it's material, right? For us, our clothes, they are material. Our slippers is material. But Lord Krishna's paraphernalia is all spiritual because the expansion of Sheshnag. All these things are inconceivable to us. Huh? How can it be? How can a slipper be spiritual? How, how can it happen? But why not? It's the Supreme Lord. He can do anything he likes. We can't do these things, but he can. He can. He can wear spiritual slippers. We can't even begin to imagine how, but my slippers are full of dirt and you know I keep them outside the house. I don't worship, but we worship the Lord's padukas. Why? Because they're spiritual. They're spiritual. This is not, not material. Our umbrella is material made of matter, but the, not the Lord's. Lord's is an expansion of Sheshnag, of Lord Balaram. So Lord Baladev in Krishna Lok is Nityananda Prabhu. Therefore, Nityananda Prabhu is the original Sankarshan and Mahasankarshan. And his expansions as the Purushas in the universes are plenary expansions of Nityananda Prabhu. So we say that Lord Krishna is there. He's the original personality of Godhead. He first expands into Balaramji. Then Balaramji, he expands into Sankarshan 
Mahasankarshan. And then comes the Purusha Avatars. So it means these Purusha Avatars, they are all expansions of Lord Balaram. Who are the Purusha Avatars? The Shiro Dakshai Vishnu, Garbo Dakshai Vishnu, Mahavishnu. Who are they? They are all expansions of Balaramji. Hmm? And who is Lord Nityananda? He is Balaramji. Lord Nityananda came 500 years ago in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. So but it's from this same Lord Nityananda that all the Purusha avatars are coming. The Purusha avatars are Mahavishnu, Garbha Dakshai Vishnu, Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. So we can try to begin to understand the supermost excellent position of Lord Nityananda. Who is Lord Nityananda? We are trying to understand. We, are, we were trying to understand who's Lord Chaitanya in the previous chapter. And now we are trying to understand Lord Nityananda's position. You know, so all these universes, they're coming out from the body of Mahavishnu. Who's Mahavishnu? Is an expansion of Lord Nityananda. So, Lord Nityananda is the Supreme Lord himself because he's Balaram, but his mood is of serving. His mood is not of enjoying. Balaramji's mood is serving. How can I serve? That is Lord Balaram's mood and Lord Nityananda's mood. And that's why he's known as the Adi Guru, the original Guru. Original Guru. So, he's the Supreme Lord, but he is showing us what is service, how to serve. He's the Lord himself. In this chapter, the author has described the history of his leaving home for a personal pilgrimage to Vrindavan and is achieving all success there. In this description, it is revealed that the author's original paternal home and birthplace were in the district of Katwa, in the village of Chamatpur, which is near Naihati. So here, now we are going to hear about Lord Nityananda. Uh, where was he? Where did he appear? His parents, his village. Krishna Das Kaviraj's brother invited Sri Miniketan Ramdas, a great devotee of Lord Nityananda, to his home. But a priest named Gunnar Nava Mishra did not receive him well. And Krishna Das Kaviraj was Swami's brother not recognizing the glories of Lord Nityananda, also took sides with the priest. Therefore, Ramdas became sorry, broke his flute and went away. This was a great disaster for the brother of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. But on that very night, Lord Nityananda Prabhu himself graced Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in a dream and ordered him to leave on the next day for Vrindavan. So we are also going to hear the story of how Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who is the author of this Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, how did he actually write this Chaitanya Charitamrita? We are going to hear in detail about that. Are there any questions or comments? Sorry, just one question. You said that the Shweta Di the Garbo Dakshai Vishnu is there. Um, so, um, Shweta Dwe, Garbo Dakshai Vishnu, again enters into every atom. As, and, as Shiro and Dakshai. Dakshai Vishnu. So, it is Shiro Dakshai Vishnu who is there on the Shweta Dwe. But it's not wrong to say Garbo Dakshai Vishnu because he is himself, you know, it's mm. just an expansion of him. Mm. So, Mahavishnu, Garbo Dakshai Vishnu, Shiro Dakshai Vishnu, they are all. All the same. All the same, you know. But it's just what Mahavishnu is, when he's, when he's outside the universe, he's Mahavishnu. He enters the universe, he's called Garbhudakya Garbhudakya Vishnu. Then when he's entering into every atom, into the heart of every living entity, mm -hmm. when he's living in the Shweta Dweep, he's called Shirodakya Vishnu. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Okay. So that means that going to Vrindavan, we are visiting the spiritual land, right? Yes. That's why there is so much importance of dham. Yes. And so that's the reason Prabhupada would say that we can't go to Vrindavan by just purchasing a ticket. You know, it's mm -hmm. not that, oh, yes, yes, I can buy a ticket and I can go to Vrindavan. Okay. But what did we see when we went to Vrindavan? We mm -hmm. saw dirt and earth, you know. 
So that's the reason when we go to Vrindavan, we need to approach Vrindavan with humility. Um, it's always recommended to take the to take the permission of the spiritual master mm. to go to, before going to Vrindavan. The devotees, when they enter Vrindavan, even before they enter Vrindavan, they offer obeisances to Brajraj. Mm -hmm. They roll themselves in Brajraj. You know, they take the permission of Gopeshwar Mahadev to be actually try to get a glimpse of what real Vrindavan is. Because we can't see it. We are, we, our eyes, our hands, legs, eyes, nose, everything is material right now. So we are not able to approach the spiritual with our material eye. We yeah. need to spiritualize our senses. Then we can see. But even though, even though we go with our material eyes, we can feel some potency then. Even though we are not able to see the real Vrindavan, we just feel magical there, you know? Because it, it, it does have the potency, right? Yes. Yeah. And we are yes. able to feel a bit of it. So my poor dham, my Dham is also the same because Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are eternally happening. It's just we can't see them. Krishna's pastimes are eternally happening in Vrindavan. It's just we can't see them. Mm. Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. But we can't see. So it's like the embassy of the spiritual world right now here on this earth planet. Okay. Thank you. Up here for today, for Chaitanya Charitamrita, Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada, Ki Jai Gaurav, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna.